Well, you don't select the songs with him. Sure, he, he selects the songs. I mean, that's the beautiful thing is we go into the movie and before we start shooting, he knows a lot of what he wants to play. And in this case, KHJ, which is the backdrop of the movie and is a character in the movie, was a station that he listened to as a child growing up, driving around L.A. And when we were location scouting on our, our bus, we would have KHJ, the radio checks from that era, playing the whole time. So what was funny, we'd be driving around like, it's 79 degrees in Hollywood and cloudy. We'd be like, well, it's 79 degrees and cloudy today. So it was kind of funny. But um, within those air checks that um, we were able to find, there were the songs, there were also the commercials. And so that kind of informed some of the things he wanted. And what's interesting is that he, you find out that some of the songs were popular in Los Angeles were not popular in the rest of the yeah. country. And so he chose some of those, which will be interesting to see the spike on what happens with those songs now. But that's the beautiful thing about Quentin and his soundtracks is he goes in informed, and it's magnificent. Also, the, the, the sound of the commercials were, for him, as important as the songs themselves. Yeah. And, and, and because people, when they were driving didn't necessarily turn down the sound when the commercial came on. It was played at a similar volume. So he was very clear about and the DJs talking. It, that was all part of the sort of the collage that he wanted to, to build. But as Shannon said, he knew most of the songs that he was going to use. Um, and for example, the 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 final you know Jose Feliciano? Yeah, the Jose, yeah. Jose Feliciano. Was absolutely there. Um, you know, the, in, in one, one, one of the uh, fight scenes was choreographed to a specific song he had in his mind. So it's very clearly formed, you know. And so I think so. A few playlists have been made on Spotify already to listen to those songs. And I have to say, I was listening to it on the way here. And it's that wonderful experience because he selected such esoteric pop songs from that period of time. My brain only associates them with the images of the movie, and it does feel like rewatching the movie as I'm walking around. It's wonderful. It, it, it's an amazing character in the movie for us. Yeah. You know, you have Brad, and you have Leo, you have Margot, but what you do have is this, this other character which is continually playing and weaving between the characters, which seamlessly lines them up as you move from character to character. And I think it, it's... It's an amazing, I mean, what you're saying is actually what I think is highly successful in keeping 1969 alive.